This is a resistance extension video. So uh, you will have come across the concept of resistance and hopefully recall that it is affected by temperature, by length, by the thickness and by the type of material. But actually the resistance varies within different materials as well. And if we start with the, um, something called an ohmic conductor, um, these are materials that you don't come across every day. But for these resistors, um, whatever, um, whatever the current is, um, the voltage is always going to be directly proportional. And they follow this pattern, which is called Ohm's law, um, named after, um, obviously not the unit, named after the person George Ohm who founded this idea. And so if you see a graph, and this is called a current voltage graph, all it is showing is as you increase the voltage, imagine one of those power packs where you crank the voltage up. If you use to measure the current, the more you crank the voltage up, the more the current goes up. In fact, it's directly proportional because it goes for the origin, and if you double the voltage, you would double the current. And we refer to one of these as ohmic resistors. These are not things you necessarily come across every day. Actually, the things you come across are more like things like a, a, what we call a filament lamp, a standard light bulb, the old-fashioned ones with the wire inside, a piece of wire, and something slightly different happens with those. As you crank up the voltage, um, you might notice that whilst initially the current goes up, after a while, especially the second half here, you're cranking the voltage right up and the current's not getting through. It's not going through any faster. It's not having that effect anymore. We sometimes say this has got an S-shaped curve because it looks like a, an S overall. And the reason for this is that the atoms inside that wire get hotter the higher the voltage because they're being pushed past and there's more resistance. And so as the um, voltage goes up, the current is not going up in a proportional way due to that change in temperature. Now you might ask, well, what's this bit at the bottom, this S here? Well, if you imagine a, a circuit, like an electronics board, and you put the batteries in it, if you flip them around, the electricity goes the other way. So for an ohmic conductor, it doesn't matter which way around the electricity goes, um, you just get the opposite pattern, and you'd read a minus number on your voltmeter and, and ammeter. Um, and once again, it's the same pattern for a filament light bulb. However, not all devices are like that. Some devices, called diodes, give you a different pattern. And diodes, you might remember the symbol, is a circle with a tri an arrow um, and a little stopper in front of it. And it indicates electricity can only go in one direction. And so when we look at these diagrams, we can see that actually when we turn the batteries around, we get no current flow. Or do we? There is um, a point at which we effectively break the diode because we've got such a large voltage on it, we just force electricity past anyway. Um, the most common ones in exam don't show this little tail down here, but that is the reality of what happens. Now, what might they ask you to do in an exam? They might ask you to use this graph to calculate resistance. And all it is is working out the gradient um, from one of these graphs. So if we think about um, the change in Y is the current, and in X we can get the voltage. And from that, um, we can use our formula triangle to do voltage divided by current in order to calculate um, our resistance. So watch out for those ones. So we can see in this one here for the light bulb, if we were to calculate um, the um, resistance for a filament light bulb, we can see we've got a much smaller change in current and a much bigger change in voltage, and that is why we get a much higher resistance. So watch out, you might need to apply those formulas. 